again. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheel. We're at the National Motor Museum, inside the National Motor Museum. My name's Mick and I'm one of the curators here. And I'm standing with another Australian legend. A lot of you would have already recognised the 1956 uh, F.J. Holden. Uh, now, we're bringing you, uh, in these times of uh, social distancing measures, uh, we're bringing you a bunch of our vehicles that don't run um, and, and showcasing them because we can't take them out on the street anyway. So now's a perfect time for Nigel and I not to hop in on the beautiful bench seat of the FJ Holden together, um, but still hopefully we'll make it as interesting as possible for you. So uh, as I mentioned, the FJ is a legend. It was the second uh, model built by Holden of Australian car, the first one being the FX or the Holden 48215. Now the FX was never built in huge numbers, um, particularly at the start, production was slow. They basically, you know, they wanted to get the all Australian car out and it took a while for their manufacturing capacity to catch up basically with public demand. Um, but the FJ was a little bit different. They, by that point, they were already very good at uh, churning out big numbers uh, of FJs, and they built about 170,000 of them between 1953 and 1956, um, when the FJ was eventually replaced by the FE Holden. So, a few differences between uh, the FX and the FJ. They both have a, a very similar sort of derived from a 19 late 40s uh, American automobile body style of sedan. This one. Um, the main thing that I always uh, look at to, to tell an FX from an FJ um, is the grille. The grille is quite different and uh, we'll show you a comparison side by side shot of the two. Just in general the FJ was considered to be a, a little bit prettier of a model basically so they added some decorative features that weren't included in the FX. So um, this one is a special which is the highest level of trim uh, for the FJ but it has chrome uh, around the windows and um, these beautiful little chrome fins on the back. Um, uh, for the tail lights. In the 1950s, Holden had a real lion's share, pardon the pun, of the market uh, of new cars. So uh, I think they were pushing about 50% of all new car sales in this period, 1955, 1956, were Holden FJs. So basically what they were doing was putting a whole generation of baby boomers into car ownership. Um, and uh, even though the performance of the FJ would be pretty pedestrian nowadays, I think uh, top speed was 135 kilometers an hour, which is still quite respectable. Um, but they certainly were slow off the mark, um, although at the time the six-cylinder uh, grey motor that's in this was not considered slow. Um, but I think uh, in general when I look at things like the, the sun visor on this car, there's a real sense of sort of uh, the fun of car ownership and you can just picture um, people who had never owned a car before perhaps being able to take their family for a, for a holiday on a Saturday or Sunday out exploring the country. So enough about the FJ, let's go take a look under the bonnet with our mechanic Nigel. Nigel, you love working on our uh, 1950s vehicles. They're a lot simpler than uh, the ones from later on. Is that right? Oh, most definitely. So they're a lot less complicated, um, a lot easier to work on in some respects, but they can always prevent a bit of, or present a bit of a challenge for us um, trying to figure out what's going on in old wiring. So um, the FJ we pulled out, we've been do going through and doing an audit on her, uh, similar to what we did with the 4.7, and she has a few cooling system issues, the radiator is actually out of the vehicle and it's actually in the boot, it needs to be repaired. Um, the hoses have become very old and cracky and she's in basic need of a little bit of uh, care and attention, needs a bit of a service. Uh, brakes are actually failing on her as well so she needs a little bit of work to, or a little bit of conservation to bring her back to a former glory but she's certainly one that is a uh, Good candidate for us to spend a little bit of time, effort, and money on her to bring her back and uh, be able to showcase her driving rather than sitting around doing an awful lot of nothing. So, the good thing about these motors, the grey motor came out in 1948 in the first Holden, basically lasted up until about 1962 with the introduction of the EH. So, very good, strong, solid, reliable engine. Not the quickest, but quick enough for the day. Um, this one's covered with a manual transmission, so three-speed manual on the tree and one reverse gear. Um, but yeah, very simple, easy to work on and usually pretty reliable at the end of the day. So, Why don't we take a look inside and imagine what it'd be like to drive one of these? Are you going to beat me to the driver's seat again? You can go this time. Oh, thanks, Mick. So inside the old Holden, you've got three on the tree and one reverse gear. Um, this was actually in a one owner car from the moment it was purchased, brand new, to approximately around about fifth month, fourth month of 1999. She was a one owner, 
um, before she was donated to the museum. So I think the coolest thing about this car is the fact that it's actually the red colour that it is, but it's been modified slightly with the yellow dash and obviously the fawn roof on it. It actually sets it off quite well and makes it just that little bit different from your standard everyday FJ Holden. So still quite comfy. Interior is immaculate. Um, both front and rear seats. Everything is here. It's an absolute beauty of a car. Absolute beauty.